Hello everybody and welcome back to the Mini MOOC. We're delighted that you've joined us. Our guest speakers today are Kirsty Forrester, Jody Garrow and Fraser Thompson, who will describe the process of the MERN's youth consultation. Kirsty Forrester is a community learning and development worker for Aberdeenshire Council and has worked in the MERN's for four and a half years. Jody Garrow and Fraser Thompson are both members of the MERN's Youth Forum. They're going to explain who they are and give an introduction to themselves. Um, momentarily. The presentation will describe the MERN's youth consultation process, a youth-led co community research project. So I'll hand over to Kirsty and Fraser for now and Jodie will be joining us shortly so they can tell you. Anyway, I'll let them tell, tell you more <laughs> about the project. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Ramon. Um, Hi everyone. We we were going to actually deliver our presentation live, but Jodie's having um, technical um, problems. She's actually trying to deliver the uh, presentation live from the Robert Gordon University in Aberdeen. Uh, the rest of us who are out in the deepest, darkest rural Aberdeenshire have no technical issues. So um, because only two out of the three of us are here, we're actually going to just um, play you a video of our presentation and then we'll um, answer all your questions at the end. Um, so do you want to just play the uh, video, Ramon, because we introduce ourselves in, in it? Okay. There's no sound. Sorry, just bear with us a second, please. We've got no sound. Can you hear it? Yeah. Can you hear it? No. Do you want us to do it anyway, Ramon? I don't know what's happened to the audio. Just go on. Should we speak over? <laughs> can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. yeah okay. Um, do you want me to put it back to the start and you'll take over? Yeah, we'll, we'll do it live. Yeah. Okay, Fraser, are you ready? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Okay, so um, as we said, Jodie isn't with us today. She's 18 and she's just started her first year at Robert Gordon University studying sociology and uh, she's a member of the Merns Youth Forum. Um, uh, my name is Fraser Thompson. I am 19 years old. I'm studying animation at Aberdeen College and I'm also a member of the Merns Youth Forum like Jodie. Uh, my name is Kirsty Forrester. I'm a CLD worker for Aberdeenshire Council and I'm based at Merns Community Centre. Um, the Merns is an accessible rural area about halfway between Aberdeen and Dundee and it's a growing community which is situated in the strategic growth corridor which runs alongside the A90 dual carriageway. During December 2008, young people aged 12 to 25 across the Merns Community School Network area were asked what they felt about their community. The Merns Youth Consultation was organised by the Merns Youth Forum and Aberdeenshire Council's Community Learning and Development, or CLD. CLD encompasses youth work, adult learning and community development work. CLD work should empower people individually and collectively to make positive change in their lives and communities through learning. Um, Good CLD practice is based on identified need and in December 2008 our local CLD team and the Merns Youth Forum didn't know what the needs of young people in the Merns were. The Merns Youth Forum aim is to make the Merns the best place to be a young person in Aberdeenshire. We needed to better able, we needed to be able to better represent young people locally. And uh, the CLD service needed to improve the quality of our youth work delivery locally. The main purposes of this consultation were to find out what young people living and going to school in the Merns felt about their community, establish a responsive approach to developing youth work provision in the Merns and also to engage with young people in the Merns area and make them aware of the services and potential opportunities available to them through youth work. At the time there was very little youth representation within the Merns. Community planning structures needed to recognise the importance of youth participation and to bring young people's voices to the table. 
Young people were involved and drove the process from the start, designing graphics, planning assembly presentations, liaising with the school, analysing results and feeding back. The young people who took part were asked about different aspects of life in the mines. While most of the questions came from members of the youth forum, questions also came from the community planning partners such as the police, education and Bernardo's. The consultation was delivered at Mearns Academy and at different locations around the Mearns. The response was excellent. Uh, 263 young people took part, with 91% being school pupils. It was carried out via paper questionnaire, receiving a very high response rate from uh, more than one in four young people in the Mearns took part. These methods didn't work well for those who'd already left school. We did try to engage with uh, older young people at the co-op on a Friday evening and in local businesses, but it was difficult for under 18s, the age of uh, under 16s, the age of most of the forum members, to engage with 18 to 25 year olds. Engaging with this age group is a challenge, and we struggled to to identify ways to do this effectively. Uh, on reflection, consulting was the easy bit, and what happened next was hard. It was the next steps that ensured there was an impact. It was feeding back um, to young people. Um, through, we fed back through a youth event with bands and youth information displays, gathering more information from young people along the way. Fraser. The Youth Forum analysed youth consultation results, highlighting what they felt were the key points and what actions they felt they could take to address them. These points were used as tools to facilitate a discussion with service providers and partners from voluntary organisations at a meeting in May 2009. The Merns Youth Consultation was a great success. It was good to see the amount of people and groups that supported us and responded. The consultation showed us that most young people feel that they are not listened to, but through the feedback process it was really encouraging to see that more people in the community were listening to what young people had said. Uh, CLD staff, in partnership with the Merns Youth Forum, worked hard to respond to the views expressed in the consultation. And as a result of the Merns Youth Consultation 2008, the Youth Forum is more focused and become an independently constituted group holding their first ever AGM in 2010. We've got more focused youth work. There is an increase in youth representation through the Scottish Youth Parliament and local strategic partnerships. And we have improved sexual health services and information for young people including free contraception and a pocket guide designed for and by young people. And the local CLD team were able to use the research to get over £15,000 worth of funding. In October 2010, the Mearns Youth Forum successfully applied to the Concordon and Mearns Community Planning Group for funding to conduct a follow-up consultation in order to update our data and evaluate the impact of the previous consultation. As a group, we discussed and decided questions put within the consultation and the Community Planning Group also, also submitted questions. We invited other youth groups such as the Lawrence Kirk Skaters, the Pupil Council and the Scouts to a meeting to give feedback on the questions before they became final. The consultation was carried out using PP Vote, an electronic voting system, during February 2011 at Mearns Academy, at the Friday Night Youth Cafe, at youth work groups, and online via the Youth Forum website. These methods were less effective than the previous paper questionnaire, but this could have been because, although it was optional, the teachers had been more involved in getting young people to complete the 2008 consultation. 144 young people took part, which was approximately 15 to 20 percent of young people aged 12 to 25 living in the area. The results were then compiled in, um, into a report, and the Mearns Youth Forum went through the report and identified the main issues and what needed to be done to address them and what the Mearns Youth Forum could do. Having fed back to young people through a youth event with bands and youth information displays, the results were then fed back to stakeholders at a meeting in June. The main aims of the feedback event was to identify outcomes and to find out how people we invited could help with the main issues that were highlighted by young people who were consulted. We, we decided to feed back the results through the use of case studies which dealt with specific issues such as transport, stress, nothing to do, alcohol misuse, not feeling safe at night. This method was chosen as it was understood that many of the issues um, raised were interlinked in some way or another, i.e. if you've got no transport then you've got nothing to do and vice versa. The case studies were then presented to the groups which uh, and were discussed in detail with the forum members facilitating discussions. Um, these discussions and further responses from decision makers were compiled into a report which is available to view all, our website alongside all of the reports and films from our 2008 to 2011 consultations. The 2011 youth consultation revealed that many of the issues young people raised in 2008 have not yet been addressed. Transport is still an issue as well as lack of lighting in parks. 
Many young people felt that there should be more youth-friendly youth -friendly areas to hang out, despite the forum helping to run the Youth Cafe and the Music and Media Project. Young people have also made it clear that they feel less safe in the mountains than they did three years ago. We hope the decision makers will take what young people have said into consideration when planning for the future and try to respond to some of our concerns. Can we just we pause it there, please? Can we pause it? Yeah, that's great. Um, we feel that our research has made a difference, um, that young people are listened to more and that services for young people have improved. As individuals and um, as a group, I think the young people are more aware of the impact that they can have on their community. Um, we'd like to show you a little film now, but I don't know if we're going to be able to do it if we don't have any sound. What's happening, Phil? Do we have any sound for the video? Um, I'm I'm struggling to actually uh, work out how to, why the sound has stopped coming through. So. Um... Okay, we'll just um, go on to the last part of the presentation then. I think I I could switch the video to you two talking and yeah. um and then I'll get rid of this uh, video clip and reopen it and see if that that works. Yeah. Um so you can um keep everybody entertained while I do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Fraser, let's go on to the last part of our presentation. Sorry about the technical difficulties today everyone. Um, we've got we do have a film that we would really like to show you which is about um some feedback that we got from uh, decision makers like the area manager and the head teacher of the school and young people talking about the impact the experience had on them so we hope we can play that to you at the end but we'll uh, talk about some of our um, the kind of the core group um, me and um, Jodie and Fraser um, in preparation for um, doing this presentation today we kind of met and did like a little kind of cooperative inquiry where we we reflected and inquired uh, about um, the experience of doing the youth consultation um, and these are some of our reflections that we're going to share with you now so um, you ready Fraser? Yep. So um, Fraser, do you want to read that first bit of Jodie's and I'll, I'll go on from there, okay. So um, we've tried to explore how to effectively engage with young people, um, something which we, uh, which everyone would agree can be quite challenging at times. Yeah, sometimes there's nothing you can do to get peop young, uh, people involved, particularly young people over 17, especially once they've left school and have moved on emotionally and socially. Um, it's hard to get them to do a consultation about where they're from. Uh, some people think that the consultation carried out by representatives of young people or community who want to engage with uh, more will be more effective. Just because we are young doesn't mean we know the most effective ways to engage with young people. Sometimes you just have to use whatever means at your disposal to get it done. Um, another thing we have been interested in is the different roles of young people and workers in the youth consultation. Initially we felt that young people uh, led the process, the workers gave us structure but we drove the consultation. Um, on reflection we decided that it was half and half, as much of the legwork was done by Kirsty and that can be overlooked. Um, I would like the process to be entirely led by young people but the truth is she did lots of the work. Um, Involving young people obviously takes time um, and because the youth forum only met once a week um, they would never probably have managed to do an entire youth consultation by themselves without um, a youth worker doing a bit of running around for them in between. Um, we came to the conclusion that rather than being the lead researcher I had a facilitating and administrating role but the young people led and carried out the research. It was really important that this process was led by young people because it meant that we had control over what questions were asked, ensuring that they were relevant and how much information was interpreted. Um, involving young people meant that as well as finding out information which was useful to the Merrin's Youth Forum and community planning partners, all of us who were involved were able to learn from the process. Uh, we learned that young people really can have an impact about decision making structures and how to influence them. Um, we feel that collaboration in a community research project like this is um, really, really important um, and that the community really needs to be at the fore, um, supported by researchers and professionals alike to 
take control of their futures and the decisions affecting them. We we reflected on this and we feel that if um, the youth workers or CLD staff had actually carried out the consultation that it wouldn't have had as much impact locally um, because um, young people wouldn't have bought into the process and the young people themselves were very very quickly able to respond to some of the issues that had been raised, um, particularly around sexual health. The young people were um, within six months able to campaign about issues um, of inequalities to do with um, contraception. Um, and also I think that because um, the young people were on the ground, it was, um, there were, um, and they were the ones who were asking for these things to happen. I think that decisions happen much quick, more quickly. So definitely uh, the community does need to be right at the fore. Um, Fraser? And it probably wasn't just as young well people. As, oh, as, right, well okay. <laughs> <laughs> as well as having an impact on us as a group of young people, our consultation also impacted the work of the wider adult community. As a result, young people are more involved in decision making locally and the Marins Youth Forum as a representative voice for young people are consulted about a range of issues. Uh, we feel that we would this, this would not have happened if the local CLD team had carried out the consultation themselves and not involved young people. Um, sometimes it feels like you have to put your point across uh, to prove that young, young people have a right to be present. Sometimes people try to sideline you because you're young. Uh, we. When we, we engaged with the decision makers, it was good to show them that young people aren't just causing trouble mucking about. Um, and it probably just wasn't just young people who benefited. Uh, the whole issue of community involvement and consultation was highlighted and has led to different ways of working. Um, CLD work <laughs> is all about learning and the educational dimension of this project really was a key element. Um, I think for me as a professional that I learned a lot about myself, um, about equalities issues, about planning and decision making structures. Um, I think the young people learned skills which have helped them in education and they were also exposed to ideas which um, have influenced them as individuals. The community and other agencies, instead of making assumptions about young people, find out about the lived experiences of young people living and learning in the Merns. And it was, I think, for everyone, um, a quite an empowering process. Okay. The United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child states that young people have a right to be consulted about things that affect us. Young people want to be involved in the community and decisions, and the young consul youth consultation meant that people did start asking us. Um, the local CLD team continues to work with the Merns Youth Forum to respond to the needs of young people living in the Scottish rural community. Uh, participatory action research is embedded in our practice and enriches all the work that we do, keeping us relevant. Um, we hope that together we can develop vibrant youth work provision that is accessible, responsive and relevant to the young people who live and go to school in the Merns today. So that's... Um, where we got to. We hope that maybe we can play a bit of our video now, Phil. Ah, perfect. Um, I'll, I'll give it a go. Um, it's, can you go back to Willie Monroe at all? Yeah. Um, take, take it from the start of him. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So hopefully okay. now you're going to get to watch a bit of a video which uh, some other people, not just us, you'll be bored of us too now. Um, and you'll get to see a bit of Jody talking about the impact of this youth consultation in the Merns. So let me know if you can hear it. Oops. Uh, hold on a sec. I need to um, make sure I'm sharing it, don't I? Right. Uh. Suspended. <laughs> Drum roll, please. <laughs> Can you hear that? Can you hear that? No. Mm -mm. Oh dear. <clears throat> there we go. So, oh, okay. Oh, no, that's Ramon speaking. Yeah, that's just me. I was just going to say we've got a question coming in if you'd like to answer that yeah. in the meantime. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's from Kevin McDermott and he says, How important was the animation? 
<laughs> How important was the animated film to helping you pull all of your information together and in helping you to reflect on the overall story? I'll just post that into the chat so you can see that there. Yeah. Um, what do you think, Fraser? The drawing that we did, that drawing bit, do you think that was important for our reflection? Yeah, um, yeah, because it, it can it, it put both the consultations together, mm. like in one, so we could all view it as one big image. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, as you can see, when when it when it finished, it's all on one big wall. So it's just quite easy to uh, look at and think about how much work went into the consultations and all that. Yeah. It was quite good because we had never really sat. I mean, it's like lots of bits of work. You sit and you just do your bits of work, and you're working away and whatever. And you never sit and actually, yeah, we're moving through. Um, a cycle and a process but we're not often I mean we're kind of reflecting on it but we're not reflecting on the bigger picture and obviously when it becomes a big picture then you can really look and see how um, things go how it went um, and and just also that it really was a kind of like a really sort of spiraling sort of cycle that we were going working our way around I think Okay, thank you, Kirsty. I'm just waiting to see if anyone's got any more questions while we're waiting okay, for the video. So. In the meantime, I'll try and play this and see if you can hear the audio this time. Okay. Is that coming through? No, no. we're not getting any sound. Um, very frustrating. Well, we can maybe just leave the video because um, if people would like to see more of our films um, and the videos, they can... Um, access it through the Youth Forum webpage. We made quite a few um, films. The, 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 the first um, youth consultation, we made like a, a film to feed back the results to decision makers. And it was definitely, I think, some of the, the use of film and, and art and it sort of being a, quite an expressive consultation. Um, I think that that's really had a lot of impact on people because it was very immediate rather than just giving them a big report we gave, we played them a film of the young people kind of uh, feeding back the results and then after that because it had been such a successful process we kind of made a we'd been asked to um, present the research to CLD students at Aberdeen University so we made a film um, where we interviewed um, various different community planning partners and different people locally about what the film had been like. So all of these um, films are on YouTube and you can access them through the Merns Youth Forum webpage. Um, if you go to www.mernsyouthforum.org.uk um, on the right hand side you'll see a link that says um, Merns Youth Consultation and if you are interested you can you can see more that way. Thank you, Kirsty. Okay. We've just got another question coming in from Kate. She says, with intergenerational work, I have found that we get great results when we, when every part of the community is invited to consultation events with public questionnaires in supermarkets. Did you find it hard to get a broad appeal across the population or was it mostly to your peers, i.e. other youth young workers? People. Young people, sorry. <laughs> um, well, it wasn't it was a youth consultation so we were only interested in the views of young people aged um 12 to 25 yeah. so um so we weren't really interested in this particular consultation in finding out the views of um other bits uh, other people um but it i think it was in both of them, Fraser, you can butt in any time because you yeah. know I talk too much. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it was harder to get. Definitely, the sort of the young the people who'd left school, wasn't it? Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, yeah, we did. We did hold a uh, for the older generation. Uh, yeah, we went to the pub. <laughs> the 18, yeah, eighteen to twenty five. So we went to the pub, and we set up shop there. But no one, no one came. So uh, <laughs> it's still, it's. I mean, I don't, I don't see what can lure them other than the pub so uh, it's still <laughs> pretty difficult to um, you still have to work that bit out but. Um, I think the difficulty is like with for, it, with youth work I mean the definition of, of uh, young people and youth work and for CLD to my knowledge is under 25 so we're working for to try to try and do youth consultation with young people aged 12 to 25 um, some of the we were I remember in the first one I gave a consultation to a young mum who came to a kind of parents group that we ran 
she didn't she didn't perceive herself to be a young person. You know, she perceived herself to be an adult. Um, she was twenty four. I mean, it is quite it's a very very broad age range. And somebody who's twenty four, who's a young mum, who's married, who lives in a house with a mortgage, doesn't really have very much in common with a twelve year old. Um, and I think that, that, that there's definitely challenges trying to uh, with that. I, I, I personally, as a worker, and I can't speak for Fraser or Jody, but I have a, a issue with that definition because I think it's very, it's sometimes a little bit unworkable. It's too broad. Okay. I don't know if we Thank answered it. Hmm. Thank you, Kirsty and Fraser. Oh, There's Lada. another question coming in from Lada. How many young people were involved in different stages of the whole consultation? <sighs> <laughs> well, we were 263 young people were consulted in the first consultation and 144 in the second. So that wasn't as many the second time round. But um, in the youth forum, I mean, how many people are in the youth forum? There's about 10. There was about 10 at the time, yeah. Yeah. And that's, um, I'm that's, not sure about the 2008 one, but mm. the later one was... There's always about 10 young, uh, it's usually about a core group of about 10 young people who are the main, the main group and the, the, the membership sort of does change, although um, some young people seem to be members of the forum for a couple of years and some just um, will be there for years and years and years and years and years. Um, so a, a little busy group of 10 people. Yeah, and we do, do we have them um, presidential role and then a secretary role to to kind of give order to all so people could the president gets more kind of in-depth look at the consultation and stuff and all that president bossy boots yeah <laughs> and then you get you get the biscuit you have a biscuit manager as well <laughs> that's an important one to say people fight over that role yeah. <laughs> okay we've got another question coming in from dave valentine he says we've been discussing the clnd workers role in the empowerment process um, mainly yeah. issues issues around being non-directive what would you, um, would you expand expand on your experience yeah um yes <laughs> this is something that um I, I watched the the video about that was in the week with the the workers in the brathy trust and it's i think an issue that they um kind of beat themselves up about and it's definitely something i'd beat myself up about about how much influence i had over the young people um and what I found quite, when we did the, when Jodie and I, and Fraser and I met to plan this presentation and um, I was sort of saying to them, I, I feel that I could, you know, tell you to do something and you would go and do it. And they said, yeah, you definitely have an influence over us, but we wouldn't do everything you say. And one thing that I've been sort of, I was actually amazed at how much they've, <laughs> they felt that they could just <laughs> just ignore me um, because I think you, you can, you know, I was, I'm really concerned that I was directing the process and directing um, everything a bit too much. But one thing I've been reflecting on recently is actually how much influence the young people have had over me. Um, and I mean, it's a shame Jodie's not here. You're not getting to see her, but um, she, you know, it's amazing how many Jodyisms my husband and I have in our, um, you know, in our day-to-day -day language, and and I I know that from working with young people, the number of times I turned up expecting them to do something, and they would kind of point blank refuse, and um, sometimes when we were evaluating things, I, I would set up the I would set up the the process for them to you know bring the materials for them to evaluate what were the important points of the consultation, but they would do it all themselves, and. Um, they would come up with different things to what I would come up with and that was what they went with. I don't know, Fraser, do you think that I pushed you around too much? Only in times when we really needed it. I mean, um, uh, the second consultation, the one that I was involved with most, um, it was a, a time, the time we were doing it around was about kind of uh, April, kind of March, April time. Um, so that was difficult because a lot of us were having exams at the time. So that put a lot of stress of us. So having the kind of exam kind of typical stress and then on top of that having to do the consultation, um, I think it was difficult. But um, the times when Kirsty yourself came in, there were probably times you needed to anyway because it was getting a bit out of hand. Um, but no, yeah, you were okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> I mean, one thing it's been really interesting actually with the young people is trying to get them to understand that they represent all young people and they don't just represent themselves. Um, I don't know how diverse the young the youth forum is. You know, they um, a lot of the time they kind of do become friends and they do represent they do kind of represent each other or you know they look like each other I, and I think it was one thing we had a lot of discussion and we did a lot of activities to try and help them understand that they do have to represent the views of all young people and we have had one or two young people who found that extremely challenging um, and that's difficult because if they're they, they are as a youth forum they're given a platform that they wouldn't be given if they were just Fraser Thompson but as Fraser Thompson member of the youth forum he's given a platform to speak and so he needs to be able to understand that he um, even if he doesn't agree with all the views he still needs to be able to represent them um, a lot of young people in the youth consultation complain that they've got nothing to do and we had one guy, boy who's saying but there's loads to do but there's loads to do you know well, maybe for a young person living in Lawrence Kirk, which is our kind of biggest urban urbanish settlement, um, there is loads to do um, with a you know mum and dad who'll drive you around from activity to activity. But um, for a lot of young people, there aren't. And I think um, young people, Fraser and Jodie were very good at actually uh, representing the data rather than representing their own experiences. Thank you, Kirsty and Fraser. We've got a question from Phil saying um, did you try to u using social media like Facebook and Twitter would that work better than the pub <laughs> probably yeah probably. <laughs> maybe um, if we'd had <laughs> free beer I don't know yeah something like that we did actually um, the best we did have a prize of a bottle of vodka didn't we oh no oh yeah no uh, okay. that's right the pub the pub it was for over 18s and we, the pub had said that they would do a raffle of a bottle of vodka <laughs> but still didn't make them come. That sounds no. terrible. I probably should um, admit that we did that. <laughs> yeah. The closest, yeah, no. in terms of um, online or kind of, mm. the closest we did was the Survey Monkey on our website. Um, mm. That was it, yeah. Okay. okay. But, no, but we did use Facebook though because, do you not remember, we had, remember we got, had asked everyone to um, ask all their friends. Do you not remember we did a post through, via Facebook? Oh, yeah. But for, for what we pro probably did was we had uh, a post made by the for Merrin's Youth Forum Facebook page, which uh, needs probably needs more likes. Um, <laughs> and then... Every, but all of our members like are, are, are like the are part of the or like the page. They go and share that status, so then the status gets shared about, uh -huh. and um, it goes on like a loop like that. I think that's one thing we tried um, just to get. I think it was just a link to the Survey Monkey, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. To the website, yeah. yeah. So yeah. It was, it's simple enough. I mean, but you'd be amazed at how many how many young people couldn't just click a link and answer a few questions. You know. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, we've got another question coming in. You've got quite a few questions here. Um, and this is from Rob Craig, and it's specifically for you, Fraser. Uh -huh. I have done some work with old people, and they have said that they, that they look to me as their leader, despite my efforts to behave otherwise, and we're not concerned about that. Did or do the people in the project view Kirsty as a leader, and if not, how do they view her? Um, I think... Uh, um, I think new people, new people um, who come who join the forum, especially because a lot of them nowadays are coming from kind of younger years, uh, first, second, and third year. They kind of come into the the forum and they see Kirsty as a youth worker, and they don't know anything about the forum really. So, I think those kind of ones look up to her like a leader and stuff. Um, as for people like me and Jody who are slightly <laughs> older, so <sort of, laughs> as, as for people who like me and Jody who are a bit older. Um, and we've been there forum for a while. We understand that we're we're we it's our forum, you know, um the young people's forum. So Kirsty's almost there to as as we said before, kind of facilitate the discussion and stuff. We're really meant to create all the discussions. Um so yeah, well I don't really view her as a leader, I kind of view her as more of a <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah, no. Um but we have I mean within the forum, as I said before, we have our own we have a president, you have a, we have a president, mm. we have a secretary, we have all these different roles, which, uh, and it's, Kirsty seems to just be there to kind of, yeah, as I said, facilitate this stuff. So um, mm. I think, um, I think yeah, it does know. depend on the quality of the president. You know, um, yeah. I have to say Fraser 
Jodie was the president and then Fraser was the president and the both of them were excellent um, yeah. and <clears throat> it really um, I think if you've got a good president who is willing to kind of take control and also obviously as president Fraser would come and see me in advance of meetings so that we could yeah. talk about what needed to be achieved and stuff so yeah. really so, I, I felt a lot of the time my role was as his personal assistant you know yeah well yeah you would you would uh, Kirsty would give me like I'd ask her maybe not know maybe I'd already know the week before but I'd come in and ask her you know well, what are we just what are we doing this week what are we on to this week and she would have uh the things I need you, I had to discuss and talk about and all that and I would just go ahead with it you know um stuff like that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool there was a question there was a question missed I'm sure um yeah oh, number really? five question oh. five yeah let's have a look what's that For, I don't know if I get this oh, one oh sorry you, yeah what did you try to get engagement from the youngsters I'm not yeah. quite sure what it, I, if I follow it. Let, let me ask Alan or Brian, Alan, what he means by that. What did you try to get engagement from? I'll reply to that. But if we okay. just move on to the next one for now, um, if you guys have a look what that is, okay. while I'll just reply. Uh, this is my point. Uh, if you separate strands of the community, you have to struggle to get a balanced sample. People define themselves by ability or by engagement these days. Um, have you taken part in the youth parliament movement? Um, so I think Kate had asked us earlier if um, we'd only been asking young people or if we'd been trying to engage with the whole community when we'd done our consultation. Um, so she, her point is that um, if you separate different strands of the community, you struggle to get a balanced sample and that people define themselves by ability or by engagement these days. Um, and she wants to know if we've taken part in the youth parliament movement. Fraser? No. Have we taken I've... part in the youth parliament movement? Yeah, was that the thing we went to when we... with the... no, that wasn't, no. Oh, well, Andrew was our youth parliament member, remember? Remember, remember? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we did actually invite our... So, um, and we, we sat have... down and questioned him. Yeah. Yeah. Tell, tell them about what we did. We, oh, we did a radio show, didn't we? Yeah. Was that the radio show? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we did a radio show where we um, got our parliament, or we, we invited both of them, both mm -hmm. were MSPs. Yeah. Only, uh, unfortunately, only one of them turned up. Mm -hmm. um, and then we did a kind of radio show in the local radio, the Samarans FM is our local kind of uh, volunteer radio. So we got a guy in from that and we just recorded our own radio broadcast. Uh, it was about two hours, wasn't it, the show? Mm -hmm. Um, so we had kind of uh, questions we had to ask him, and then we had um, uh, people from the school coming into question mm. uh, the uh, member of the youth parliament. Mm. Um, that was anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think we've tried to engage with them, and we've obviously invited them to all of our feedback, our MSYP to all our feedback mm -hmm. events, and um, we did invite. We met with our local MSP Nigel Donast after the second consultation, um, and um, uh, Andrew, our, who's our MSYP, came along to that. Um, I don't know. I mean, obviously in terms of engagement with the Scottish Youth Parliament, all we can do is pass on the information to the MSYP and hope that they then represent the, our views further. Yeah. Um, we do have um, a member who, who's a member of the Aberdeenshire Youth Council, so obviously we'd hope that he would be um, taking some of the issues that had been raised by the young people and um, representing them there. Okay, uh, we just got clarification. I think it's from mm. Brian Allen, yeah. uh, and he says, "Yeah, I'd just like to know what method oh, okay. we coax youngsters to give input to get involved." So, yeah, yeah, that's great. Okay, Fraser, do you want to answer that one? Um, to, to he's talking about people to fill out what, the consultation. Yeah, yeah, um, such as the PP vote and all that, and the yeah. like, the survey okay. and the the prize well, drawn stuff. Prize draw for the pub. No, no, for the. Oh member. yes. Oh right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. This is I'm trying to remember it all. Um, what we did was we had a leaf, uh, kind of a, kind of fifty fifty pound note, uh, with my face on it because I was the president of the forum. Um, <laughs> and what we did was, <laughs> what we did was we took this note and we said 
uh, if there's a prize draw uh, to fill out this consultation via the survey monkey or uh, the uh, via the PP vote anyway yeah so come along and try out this vote and we'll give you a 50 pounds voucher I think it was HMV voucher or yeah. something like that so everyone who filled out the consultation got their name put in a hat mm -hmm. and we drew that name from a hat and they won 50 pounds that was one way of doing it um, mm -hmm. what was the other method? Well, I mean, that was the main thing, really, yeah, that, was that, that bribery. Was thing, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We did, so when we were there presenting at the uh, assemblies and stuff, we did mm -hmm. emphasise the £50. Um, well, that was uh, the because, thing, yeah, you did assembly yeah. films. You, they, Fraser, you made a film like it was based on Star Wars and was quite yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. And Fraser and Judy <laughs> would go up and make fools of themselves <laughs> and try Basically, and get yes. people to come yeah. along. Um, we used PP vote the second time. We we thought that would be quite attractive, and yeah. young people would quite like it. But actually, young people um, weren't as engaged with it. Um, one thing we found difficult was the first time, <clears throat> young people. Both times we had a prize draw, and they could, you know, win fifty pounds. The first time we did it, that seemed to be quite an incentive. But the second time round, I, I remember walking down the corridor at school saying, "Do you want to come along and do this?" And the young people saying to me, oh, "I don't need fifty pounds. I've got loads of money." <laughs> Yeah. And that, it just made me realise actually how fortunate some of the young people down there were. Mm -hmm. um, and actually for a lot of them, £50 isn't an incentive, which seemed a shame. So I'm not quite sure. Yeah. I think we've talked about it. We've not quite managed to identify what would be a, an effective incentive for these young people. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh, guys, sorry to overload you. If mm. you want me to slow down asking no, the questions. Or, okay. So we've got a, quite a long question from Kevin here. Yeah. He just he says, I'm involved in a youth project and one of our volunteers has just been awarded a scholarship on the back of her voluntary work not her academic qualifications can Fraser identify any examples like this where people who have been involved in the forum have been able to use their experiences to help them into work or learning okay community award at school that would be one for <laughs> Jody to speak about, wouldn't it? Mm. Um, I talk about youth uh, achievement awards. Is that? Well, no, I think he's what he's wanting to know is like as a result. I mean, obviously the young people did do accreditation, and like Jody got a what it, a Young Quality Scott Award, and yeah, you can because I don't know about that. She she's better mm. to explain that herself. Yeah, um, the young people have have got loads of different kind of awards and and bits and pieces and things like that. I think, I mean, it's a shame. It is a real shame that Jodie's not here because, um, <laughs> I think, you know, she's doing sociology now at university, and and I do feel that um, her experiences in the youth forum have influenced, you know, the choice and the direction that she's taken in her life and but I, I can't say that for her because she's not here but I mean you know we've we've talked about that and um, it, it's really interesting um, we went down to do a, a presentation at a conference and some of the stuff that she was studying she's doing um, in her first year she's doing research methods of um, and different forms of consultation methods and she, Jodie's like a bit of an expert so um, I do think it has had an impact um, on some of the choices that young people have, have made, certainly. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think about other things that they've done. It's, it's difficult. They've done so much. Yeah, I mean, uh, we could remember. discuss it a little bit more in the thread as well. If we, mm -hmm. if we actually have a thread mm -hmm. in the discussion group, we mm -hmm. can talk about it in more depth. And then Jodie will be able to contribute to that yeah. as well. So, Because I think it's important for her, as you mm -hmm. say, to get a... Um, experiences across and, and discuss mm -hmm. that there. So um, we've got another question coming in from Colin Wright. Um, I'll just post that now. So do you think the forum will always mm -hmm. need somebody to facilitate them? It's an interesting one, isn't it? It's a good it? question. Yeah. Mm. Um, depends. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think it depends maybe on the age of... Uh, the, the the if whether the the old how, the average age of the forum is because um mm. when me and Jody were there it was uh it was I think I was the oldest I think I was maybe sev seventeen eighteen mm. that was the oldest uh, person they had um I think if someone older was to step in say maybe 
as like maybe 25 between maybe 19 and 25 um maybe they could perhaps uh take the presidential role and then take over um and um i th <laughs> uh right the right now the forum uh members are quite young as well and i think they they still need a lot of uh, kind of direction and stuff and all that um as uh, as jody and i grew grew more knowledge of the forum and what it was all about and what we were doing here and what we were trying to do um kirsty did take a step back for a while she didn't have to do that much uh facilitating you know um because we already kind of had an idea of what we what each each week was going to bring and stuff and especially in the consultation as well i think um we already knew well jody knew is already already knew what we were going to do so we had kind of idea of what this week was going to bring what next week was going to bring um i think yeah so i think age definitely is probably a, a big factor i think the younger the younger people the young people are the more kind of facilitating they need whether uh whereas when me and jody were there kind of older kind of 18 19 um age that's when the youth, the youth workers don't have to take such a kind of facilitating role um, mm -hmm. yeah i think there's a like definite issue because like jody is no longer going to weekly meetings because she's moved to aberdeen to attend university and um i think nearly all of the her year group who were involved in the forum have um moved moved away so just the I suppose to do with the location of the Merns and perhaps to do the type of young people who've been coming along to the Merns Youth Forum quite often um, young people do leave the area for a period um, and so the age the average age falls again so that does have an impact um, yeah okay thank you um, I'll just yeah Phil's got a question here he says what a was age or experience? Phil, could you just clarify what you mean? Um, just there. Talk Sorry, I was, I was just listening to what Fraser was saying and, and I was wondering um, how much of it was because you and Jody were now actually more experienced rather than just older? Um, I, probably, it's probably a combination of both, um, mm -hmm. I think, to be honest. Uh, I was, I was, um, I, I still felt that I knew that I had just a, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd just say a combination of both age and experience. Okay, thanks. Um, does that answer your question? Sorry, sorry, Phil. Yeah, <laughs> it's one that Kate <laughs> mentioned earlier. She, she sent me a message and I didn't catch it. I thought it was just a comment. So, um, yeah, Kate says, I'm tempting people to come to an event in May by putting it on a flea circus as part of the entertainment and a pal had them to a wedding and it was a huge success particularly among older people and young people so I thought mm -hmm. I'd better post that to you and she said and and she finds that cake brings folk in <laughs> yeah free food I mean <laughs> yeah I mean it's interesting we did um we had um band we used to have youth events with loads of youth bands and stuff but quite often we did that as our way of feeding back um so we'd use that and then we would present the results of the consultation and we'd do a, like another cycle to drill down a bit further um but you know perhaps that should have been the first cycle rather than the second cycle because something like that with a bit of a draw does you know often seem to work um yeah Okay, and she just said she'd. Um, can she recommend generations working together to you? Uh, they're funded by the Scottish government and should have a local representation. So just, okay. just, and that's all the comments that we've got through so far. I'll just mm -hmm. ask anybody if they got any more questions uh, yeah. to see. I mean, sorry, I don't know the. Um generations working together. I actually did some research for something I was doing at university um, and I was looking, it wasn't anything to do with the youth, youth forum or the youth consultation, it was my own re uh, university research and certainly to go with what Kate said, it was old people and young people had an almost identical profile um, in their views and uh, perceptions of the community so that's perhaps why they both like flea circuses. Um, <laughs> Fraser, I think you should put your pirate mask on now. 
Yeah, Kate, Kate just was clarifying that uh, they're usually called uh, GWT. So, anyways, um, there doesn't seem to be any more questions coming through <laughs> just now. So, uh, fabulous. So Fraser. Fraser's grown a beard. <laughs> he's um, he's aging. This this has been quite a, a strenuous for him. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with all the technical issues that we've had today, yeah. it's, it's been hard work, hasn't it? But you've done really yeah. well, you guys. Uh, thank you for your Thanks, presentation today. Um, yeah. I do apologise about the video and stuff. It just happens that way sometimes. Yeah. But we will upload it to your page on on the mini MOOC and make sure people get to see that video yeah, because at the, the beginning people were saying how fabulous it was. They were watching that as you were yeah. presenting. I think so. the the video wasn't it wasn't flowing as smoothly as it would if you just watched it straight on YouTube. So if you want to see it yeah. again and watch the rest of the video, please have a wee look. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, folks. <laughs> thank um, you. And I just want to say I'd like to thank you all for your input. It's been really interesting and invigorating, and you handled the questions really well. Can I also mm. thank Phil for his input behind the scenes and remind you all to do your task this week, guys. Um, and tune in next Monday when we have our final um, keynote speech and that will be on participatory action research as empowerment. And just as I said that, we've just got two more comments coming in. So um, I'll see if I can fit them in for you. Just just bear with me a second, please. Um, yeah, <laughs> Kate, Kate loves the pirate and um, <laughs> Brian Allen agree. People agree and just really, really good job today. Thanks a lot for Thank everything you. they're saying. So yeah <laughs> thanks <laughs> okay. okay bye bye, bye. <laughs>